This video is about using a basic set of strainers, the operation of them to make it easier and safer. Tip number one, always wear safety glasses. Let's use our strainers. <laughs> Lay out your strainers on the ground before you start to use them. This way they're within easy reach when your hands are full of wire. Always start straining your fence wires at the bottom of your end posts, not at the top, because all end posts will move a little bit, no matter how good the assembly is. Only ever strain directly to the end post if your fence run is more than 50 meters. If it's less than 50 meters, you don't have enough take up or stretch in your wire, and when you tie off at the end, the tension you lose will be noticeable. Over 50 meters, you should be right, to strain directly to the end post. If you are straining to the end post, wrap your chain about 15 centimetres above the point where you want to tie off the wire and always put the hook on your side of the fence with the chain on the opposite. This not only gives you more room, but if it suddenly lets go, the chain's going to fly off in the opposite direction to where you're going to be standing. So setting up your strainers to strain to a post is actually quite easy. First thing, obviously, is have your chain oriented 15 centimetres above or below where you want to strain off to. The next thing I do is run my hand down the chain. Now this achieves a few things. Number one, obviously the chain is going to be where I want to work with it and nice and tight. The second thing is when I run my hand down, I'm orienting all of the links in the same direction so that there's no twist, makes it easier for straining. And the third thing is I can feel any nicks or problems with the chain before I begin. Now that I've got my chain where I want it, I pick up my strainers and I squeeze the mauls together to extend the front maul. That allows me to easily hook it onto the chain. Now that I've got my strainers completely attached to the end post, all I have to do is squeeze my grips together, pull slack out of the wire, orient the wire into the grips and lock them onto the wire. I'm now ready to start straining up my wire to the post. Avoid the temptation of lengthening your lever length with bits of pipe or other devices. The length of the lever is more than adequate for the average adult of average strength to tighten the wire to its recommended strain tension. Over tightening wire only weakens it, it's like stretching a spring too far, and the first frost you get you'll end up with a loose fence because it won't recover. Stick with the strainers as they are, don't modify them. The strainers will last longer and so will your fence. If you're going to be tying off both ends and then straining in the middle of the fence line, make sure that you leave yourself a little bit extra room. I like to leave a couple of feet of extra wire, just so you've got enough belly to tie your knot off. Be generous. Now that we've got our knot tied off, let's go and strain the wire. Now assembling and straining the wire is going to be really easy because you laid your strainers out already. I like to put the lever end closest to the strainer post because this lets me set where my knot's going to be. Don't put it too close or you'll foul on the stay. Put it a couple of feet away. We're going to start at the chain end. We're going to pull nice and tight on our wire, squeeze the grips together on the chain end and then give the chain a good pull. Now, as we pull on this, we can also pull the slack out of the wire down the fence line. The next thing we're going to do is keeping the wire belly behind us. We're going to squeeze our mauls together with our hand and attach them to the chain. Now we've got everything linked up to the wire and all we have to do is attach our lever in. So stepping behind the wire, lift the wire up, making sure that it hasn't crossed over our strainers. Squeeze the grip end together on the levers pulling the wire as tight as you can and seat them on the wire. With the strainers now attached, all we have to do is operate the levers backwards and forwards. You might have to help them the first couple of times, but after that the springs will take over and you can stay away from the danger zone. But we're going to be tying our knot behind the strainers because we want to make sure that we're getting as much belly out of this wire as possible and we're not wor working in the danger zone. There we go, all I've got to do is tie off the knot and I'm done. Now there's a range of knots and tensioners that you can use on your wire. Regardless of the knot or the straining device that you use, my personal preference is to always work behind the strainers. Don't work in the middle of the strainers because if something goes wrong, you'll be much more likely to be injured. You'll also have to pull the wire out further 
to get your straining device or not tied. You'll lose less tension if you work behind and you'll work safer. Now to release your strainers is dead set easy. All you've got to do is bring your lever forward about quarter of a link and then just let the strainers walk back along the wire. As you can see, I've lost less than a link of tension having done that because I did my knot behind the strainers rather than in the belly. Now the chain falls off the malls. At this point, you can use your levers. I have not had to touch the wire. That's the moment where if anything's gonna break, it will. So it's better to use the strainers to pull the strainers off than your fingers. Setting up a fence can be a really rewarding and enjoyable experience. Hopefully this beginner's video on how to use your new strainers has helped you start your journey in a satisfying and safe manner. Don't forget, if you like this sort of content, hit the subscribe button, give it a thumbs up. There's plenty more tips and tricks on timthompson.ag. I'll see you next week.